Hello, Hamish here from mortgagesonline.co.nz. Um, I am, uh, we're talking about South Auckland um, today and some of the big changes this year for investors. And I've got a couple of experts with me, um, Charlie, hello Paul, and Richard Prasad. Um, Char Sorry, yeah. Richard. So Richard is an um, investor, he's a serial investor with an astonishing number of properties in South Auckland. Um, and now he does a bit of, he does a lot of property maintenance, expert on property maintenance. Shadi is a property manager who's been in, this, in focusing on South Auckland for a long time. So um, I thought it would, it would be good to just touch on the, the big topics. And I think the big topics this year is really, it's going to be negative gearing is being phased out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Bright Line test has just changed to five years and Healthy Homes Bill, that's coming up on the horizon, right? It's already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, let's have a think about these. So negative gearing has been phased out. How's it going to go for South Auckland? I think um, um, we have to very much focus on the positive passive income, where there is um, um, you buy right and or the properties you've been holding for a uh, few years or many many years where the value has appreciated, and uh, otherwise uh, there will be a shortfall like a uh, lot of things coming up um, uh, expenses. And old days we used to say poor, uh, poor suburbs like South Auckland or Hawke's Bay, Hawke's Bay, uh, parts of um, um, uh, parts of um, uh, Waikato uh, used to be a cheaper, cheap buy where the return used to be high, but the capital growth was pretty slow there. Mm. So uh, why is better? But now is the time is uh, changing where the investors. I like myself, we have to buy a pretty right and just manage property. Yeah, I, I think what you're saying is if you've had a property for a while, you could also check what kind of yield you're getting. Yes. Uh, you know, if you bought a house for 200 grand and you were getting you know, 300 bucks a week then, now you're getting 500 bucks, you think, okay, I'm making, you know, I'm making 25 grand a year on a house I bought for 200, but if it's worth a million, it's not such a great return. You yeah. know, so you, South Auckland yeah. has changed. Um, as a property manager, I see that as another cost um, to our landlords. The so negative gearing being phased out. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's another cost. Um, our current landlords already have uh, a lot of costs associated with having a rental property, regardless if it's in South Auckland or elsewhere. We got them uh, uh, meth testing between tenancy, high insurance uh, premiums. We've got... Um, uh, what else do we have? The negative gearing property, and we also have um, the healthy homes building. Healthy the horizon, homes building that's coming into effect. The smoke alarms we've just had, um, heat pumps and properties. So yeah, I think it's another cost that um, the landlords have to consider into their calculations. And then I'm afraid that that cost may be passed on to tenants with yep. um, higher rents. Yeah. So I, I think yeah, that's interesting because. I always hear this argument that you, you can pass on the extra costs, you know, in places like South Auckland, but can you really? Because the market decides the rent. The, market the landlord does. doesn't decide the rent. Uh, that, that's correct, but if you are having to make it harder for landlords to, um, to own a property and you um, keep upping their costs, then they may be pushed to increase rents. At the moment, we've got tenants that are sitting in their homes and we are happy with them and they've conducted their tenancy in a good manner. We don't have to worry about another $10, but if the landlord's costs are keep going up, then they may, ha they may have to. They have They've to, got yeah. no choice. It's either that or they may be out of the market. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you've I, got a few properties, Richard. I, I, I think it's demand and supply. Uh, some areas where you advertise, you probably get them. Um, uh, uh, and, and one property you probably get about 30 application of that you just filled up then demand and supply then sometimes you just have to if you advertise um, a property at X number of dollars per week but then the potential tenants will bid for that and the highest paid tenant will take the property yeah that's what's happening I've seen a few times mm. yeah. well I, th I think the way these costs Yes. are going to translate as sometimes I think that some maybe some landlords do have things under rented and they're happy to tenant, have it under rented they happy to keep a good tenant and they happy for a family to sit put but if they if their costs go up 
then they, they, they are left with no choice. Either sell up or increase the rent. Yes. And yeah. and every landlord if every landlord is doing that, then of course the rents will the go, rents up. go up. Yeah. The rents will go up. They so have I, to. I yeah. think um yeah, that that's uh, um yeah, and, and the other thing that's happening is bright light test is changing. I mean so South Auckland, would you say South Auckland have been a place where people are doing a few flips? Um uh, yes, over the years I have seen um um where the investors there are a couple of types of uh, investors there are short term mm -hmm. investors and long term investors short term investors they pick this stuff and they probably will cash out within a short term so they're not very much focused on the uh, tenants to stay on yep. and they just renovate add values and they will flip that off and make some profit at the same time they create themselves a improvement but the, these people, they property traders, they're doing it as a business. So when they're doing it as a business, they yes. factor into their numbers, the tax component, yeah. their uh, uh, losses, uh, their gains. Yes. And so for these people, yes. business is as usual. Yes. It yes. doesn't affect them. What yes. the bright line uh, test will affect are people that have bought with intention of keeping a property long term, but now having to sell it, Yes. Because yeah. of their yeah. situations yeah. having changed. Or, or shabby people that just don't like to pay tax and they they do intend to sell it but don't mm, I mean I, I guess I guess those people have probably been affected by the two year one anyway. The yeah. two year violent yeah. test yes. is going to five year now. So mm. they've probably already been weeded out. I, yeah. I, I guess it's healthy for the guys that are paying tax because they don't yeah. have to compete with the um the guys that aren't. You know? So that means those people can be out yeah. of the market, out of the industry and yeah. leave the actual, you know, we don't want cowboys in the industry. We want real people, yeah. people that actually go in and buy property and add value to it because it serves the wider community for our tenants. Yes. So I think that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but again, I think the, uh, the investors who are short-term investors, uh, they want to make some profit. If there is no profit, is any business doing is no good. Yeah. And I have a feeling that by, like this uh, bright line test was introduced in 2015, uh, 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 with the, I mean two years keeping holding the properties, and now they're going to. It's already been I mean approved Pass submission. Five yes, years. Past, yeah, five mm -hmm. years. <clears throat> so that will two things will happen. I uh, I think um, the where there is a um, the. Investors holding properties, they may probably go on the market to sell, and the ch high chances is that first home buyers may buy. But then again, there will be a short supply of the rental properties, which push the rent up again. Mm. So short supply, demand and supply, and the rent will go up. Okay, so you think investors might come off a bit, and then and there might be more, a few more home buyers coming yes. in as they try and just maybe get out and, and look at other things. Um, uh, yes. Instead of property trading and holding for a few years. So the property trading isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think if it's done right, it's good because what that means is these property traders will go on and um, do up their property and hopefully a first home buyer will buy it and first home buyers may not necessarily have the skills or the, the capital, resources yeah, or the to, capital to, to do it up or mm -hmm. know how to do it. Yeah. So that is a good thing. It's got good, um, uh, it's got good plus about it. Um, and yeah, so I think it's it's not too bad. It just yeah. also means better quality properties because the property traders have gone in there and done mm. what they mean to do. Yeah. I think the other thing as well is um, so the the uh, healthy homes bill, right? Um, is interesting because I think there's a little bit of misinformation because we were talking earlier before about insulation. Mm. Yes. Right. Do you have to do you have to insulate your property? The What's the law? The, the, the 2013 uh, census, there were 450,000 rental homes in the country. Okay, so it's no surprises that this has come in and it was introduced in 2015 and it got passed into law late last year. So the purpose of this amendment to the, tenants, uh, the Residential Tenancies Act 1986 is to um, uh, have every rental home in the country to meet a uh, minimum standard of insulation and heat pump. Yep. Again, I personally as a property manager welcome this because again we are talking about having nice dry homes for um, our community, for our tenants and that means less health issues, less Any, demand. Okay. But yeah. I mean, we don't know, we don't, so there's no real clarity in it at the moment. 
right? We'll probably find out more in 2019. Yeah. But do you have an idea of what it might cost extra for, for an investor looking for at a rental hold in the initial like setup phase? Buy hold or I cost initial, it, um, right? Like an yeah. investor looking to buy a property in South Auckland, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you kind of have a rough idea of what the stock looks like in South Auckland. Yes. Um, what, 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 do you, what do you think you have to spend extra? Um, you're looking at insulation, uh, an average of 2,500 to 3,500, depending yes. on, obviously on the floor. Size, the, uh, size floor the, yeah. yeah. Square meters. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you're looking at a heat pump of similar uh, oh, yeah. price range, 2,500 yes. maybe. Um, I yeah. got a deal done with um, one of our electricians that did a bulk lot of about uh, three or four into different properties, yeah. so I got a bit of a discount on that. Got to be a bit creative in getting yes. these discounts there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think um, the heat pump is still, uh, there's a question mark over the heat pump. because Question mark on that, I agree with you, because I've got HRV systems in rental properties and the tenants are worried that yeah. it uses too much electricity and they want to switch them off. Yes. So it's one thing saying, hey, landlords have to insulate, landlords have to put heat pumps in, and it's another thing educating our tenants. So I take it up on myself when I visit these homes to talk to my tenants and telling them the benefits of having that heat pump or the benefits of having the HRV system. And we need to do that. It's, it's something that's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. It's going to need help from landlords. It's going to need help from property managers, yep. um, from investors, and the, yes. our tenants. It's 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 a... It's a, it's bigger than what we think it is, and mm. it's going to take a few years for it to come right. And yeah. when it does, it will be beneficial to yeah. everybody. But, but extra cost, as I mean, Hamis and you said that um, uh, the power bill will go up. And here we in mm. South Auckland, we're targeting uh, pretty, you know, average uh, income people, and heat pump is costing the uh, landlord investors uh, about a average is two thousand five hundred. Yeah. Plus the other insulation, uh, 2,000 to 2,500, uh, average from 90 square meters. And so the tenant also, it will cost them money yeah. to get the heat pump going. But I guess, I mean, so four grand in the scheme of things, I mean, there's still a lot of money in property. So four grand is not a major. Um, um, it's not, money. but it's not, no. uh, it, that's a capital, a capital um, expenditure. But then again, if you break down per monthly, yeah. the extra money landlord needs. Um, with insulation, yeah, you can costs. actually, you can actually, like I've done a few, you can yeah. actually do it through your rates retrofit. So you fill out an application, and if your tenant has got a community services card, then you get a discount, and yeah. you pay it off through your rates. So it's like I, I don't know what how much it is, but that two thousand five hundred or that three thousand yes. dollars, you won't even miss it. So yeah. landlords should be embracing it's, it's it. It's not a bad idea to get yeah. onto that early because yeah. there'll be yeah. a rush once it becomes law. And I, right now it's just a disclosure that's law, yes. right? It's not. Yeah, R right now um, we are required to state in our tenancy agreement the level of insulation, where it is, and if it's not insulated, what we're doing about it. Mm -hmm. And I've been lucky, I've got some amazing uh, clients that I work with that have already gone in there, have, got quotes and properties are being insulated. Over the last six months, I can hand on my heart say we've done at least about 50 properties. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get on top of everything and get yeah. them done. And yeah. because having, having meeting these requirements, these regulations means that we can keep our tenants happy, yeah. we can keep our landlords happy, and um, yeah. it's good for everybody, yeah. What, what do you, so um, 2018 for South Auckland, right? What do you think in terms of areas? Any particular areas that are kind of turning into a, from a renters to more of an owner occupy area? Any kind of nice spots that you would look at? There, uh, I think in any area in Auckland, we do have good spots and pockets that you kind of know, and pockets where you, you know you don't want to drive there because you're scared or you lock your yeah. you lock your car. <laughs> um, they, like in South Auckland at the moment, I feel that Hill Park is is pretty good. Hill Park, yeah. Hill Park is amazing. Like yeah. it's uh, first time buyers probably will yeah. buy there. Um, and there's other parts of Manorewa that are that are good as well. And I mean, I could get a map and draw it for you if you like. Um, there is some parts in Manorewa I would avoid. Um, there is um, also, as an investor, I wouldn't um, mm -hmm. go further south to Papakoro because that's I don't feel that the rents are high enough, yep. especially with today's yep. um, average uh, price of um, houses there. Yep. I don't think you'll get the yields there. I think uh, Mangri. Oh, oh, Mangri! It's it's amazing. 
every time I've had a property available in Mangere, I've got about 20 people yeah. turning up to the viewing. Yeah. And it's one of those areas, again, where first-time buyers can actually yes. get how, on the property. How about, how about you, Richard? I mean, you've, you've been mm. in a bit of a mm. buying phase over the last few years, mm. but you, you probably, well, where would you buy if you could right now, and if you were buying in mm. South Auckland? Yeah. He was looking uh, at your uh, building uh, before. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Mangere is here. Mangere is Mangere East. Monji, yeah. Uh, Otaho, yes, yeah. one of the high <laughs> demanding suburbs where oh, not, not, yes, not, now it's all right. Good, it's yeah. right. I mean, all days you used to pick a um, way cheaper, but now it's all right. If you start fruiting, the average home is about six hundred fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars home yeah. uh, average. They're about hundred square meters, and the land will be slightly bigger where you can put another minor yeah. minor dwelling. Uh, yes, yeah, so those areas, uh, Mangere East, most mm -hmm. sort of um, middle more area, Otahu, border, yeah. edge of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Highly and, demanding. Yeah, and um, in those areas, you can get a nice home and income with, um, you know, really good yields, like really got to keep blocking and have a bit of patience and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I, I, I don't hear too much talk about and I keep going on about is the unitary plan, because in South Auckland, let's face it, there's a lot of subdividable houses now. Because that's where the land has been, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I hear that Labour is going in there and doing a lot of build in South Auckland. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure. Like, um, and I've got uh, investor clients or landlords that keep their property in hoping that one day yeah. they will, you know, knock down what they've the existing dwellings and build right. build up. I, yeah. I don't know whether um, we get to see that happen in the next. Um, I don't know next. Five, six yeah, years, I, I, I maybe, think you'll see it happen faster than, than yeah. yeah, because a yeah. lot of the changes that are done yeah. through the council, they're already mm -hmm. done. It's just people, yeah. it's hard to get the development funding at the moment. Although I'm saying that um, I can always try and look around if you're looking yeah. for development funding. Because yeah. they're, they're, oh, yes, there's non, the money man. <laughs> yeah, there is a non-banks now yeah. that are st stepping in to, yeah. to supply money where the yeah. banks, yeah. banks um, uh, are kind of shying away from. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, what, what do you think of the... Sorry, Shadi. What, what do you think of this? The subdividable. You might have a few subdividable ones now, Richard, with this unitary plan. Um, yeah, but again, you need money to do sub subdivision. The cost for the council is about 100 to 150 approx. Without the you build, land, without the land. Cost, yeah. just uh, yeah, just doing nothing, just to get the service in, mm. and going through the resource, and you're looking between 120 to 100. And it's hard to find a builder, right? And let's face it, the place, yeah, mm. shortage. If the builder will do a hard job. Mm. Well, and then they the run away and they yeah. start doing something else. So you have to wait for it. Yeah. Mm. I've got a few mates and they're halfway there, you know, waiting for the builder to come back to complete. Right, and yeah. Each day is costing money if you borrow money to complete the job. Yeah. Um, uh, like you've got your land, but then you borrow money to service the council and what are here, what not, you know, there's about 120 to 150 K. Mm. That money will be, I mean, unseen. It will be gone in the road. Package just in the right, land, no. and then that's but why then it's not build. Yeah, and it's good if you get got a land and you can easily build say two thousand approx per square meter, but, approx a basic home. But you know what, Richard? Something to look forward to. It's going to get worse if Labor starts building all these houses. Um, the building costs will probably go up, right? Um, yeah. It's not going to go down. Let's face it. So, if you're going to do it as hard as it is, it's probably not a bad time to start and, and get out of the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had landlords that have done minor dwellings. On, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's pretty good as well. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, it takes about like three or four months. Yes. I don't know the cost, I think, what is it, uh, $2,000 per square meter? Yes. For yes. Minor yeah. dwellings, a bit yeah. Cheaper, yeah, yeah. 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 If, if anybody considers doing mi minor dwellings, um, do a two bedroom, not a tiny three bedroom, because mm. I think it's important to, yes. to have, have the space. Have the but, Charlie, space. I, I've got to say, um, yeah. I'm kind of going off the minor dwelling thing because yeah. if you really study the unitary plan, yeah. you don't want to put a minor dwelling somewhere mm. where you could have actually put a whole house and subdivided. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then you're going to find it really hard to, yeah. to go down that road if you've got a, if you've got a minor yeah. dwelling in there, 60 square meters mm. or 70 or whatever it is. So, yeah. Yeah, that's just a, something just, to look at before you do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I just worry about that unitary plan that you know over time properties will turn into you know ghetto or so yeah. yeah yeah I mean Lots Aucklanders of are not used people, to it yeah you know um, but I, th I think that's the only way to yeah. supply housing you need yeah. you're gonna yeah. need it Auckland is gonna look very different yeah yeah you know yeah um, so look I think we're nearly we're nearly at 20 minutes um, a couple more minutes so I mean is yes. there any um, 
Anything we kind of missed? Um, anything you want to talk about? Um, not that, really. Uh, in closing? Um, no, I think um, I'm here tonight because you said I was going to be on national television. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not quite. This not is quite just national Facebook, TV. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> A few less viewers than national yeah, television. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the only way I could get you in here, Shadi. You're so oh busy with, your, with managing all those properties in South Auckland. Uh, not too many, just some key clients. Some key yeah, clients. Yeah, and I love it. And I think there's a difference between doing it as a job and doing it because you love it. I genuinely yes. love it. So that's why I've stuck in it and it's been over five years and still going strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Richard, you, you're getting into your maintenance. You oh. tell me some funny stories because I, <laughs> I, I know how many properties he's got, but I'm not allowed to say it. But... um. But you tell me that sometimes you dress up in a, yes. in a, in a workshop, yes. Uh, yes. work clothes and go and do maintenance and people, yes. you, you yes. like to do your own maintenance yes. and stuff uh, in your house. Well, right? with the yeah. trades people sometimes, yes, I, I carry uh, two uh, pairs of extra clothes in my cardboard always. So I wear with the trades people and I'll see actually how much uh, work is required, how much uh, you know time and will consume at the same time I'm learning. Uh, I know I've, and over the years I've been collecting properties for the last three years and I have been uh, uh, just watching, like I've done a bit of accounts and, and, and watching this, um, uh, the people buying and renovating, selling and I can do half the job now. With the yeah. renovation, and, yeah. and this is just I enjoy, yeah. It's very much just yeah. like uh, Sadi yeah. said. Uh, and you're doing maintenance for yes, other people now. So yes, that's awesome. yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, a bit of a, yeah, now since I have uh, uh, retired from uh, the big company, you know. I'm yeah. no, no longer sales. I know you saved yeah. me a bit so, of money on on a yes. yeah on a property that I thought yes. might be would be a lot more in maintenance, but you've gone in there and yes. told yeah. me to be a minimum. So it's yes. going to be meeting your health and safety requirements. Yes. Yeah, always, always. Yeah. I want to wear heels to work, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sure you can. You yeah. can get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but look, thank you. That's 20 minutes, yeah. really. So we should really? probably close it up. Um, yes. If you want to get hold of Shadi or Richard, I will put some links around, um, and uh, yeah, or, or just message me, and I'll you know give you their contact details as well. Um, but hey, thanks for listening, and um, yeah, yeah, thank you for having us. It's been good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll just shut down. Yeah. yeah, we should. Um, cool. <laughs> See you later. Okay.